I studied film and television when I was in university. And I have degrees in economics and communications. But I was very lucky because I attended, an, I attended a program that was focusing on British film and broadcasting. And through that program, I developed mentors who were interested in, in sponsoring me for a career. I graduated from Stanford University in 1977. There were very few role models for women in the entertainment industry then. And I was lucky because I was hired by the one person, a writer, director, producer, and studio owner, small studio, uh, named Roger Corman. And Roger Corman believed in gender equality back in the 70s, long before anyone else did. And, uh, and that's how I got my start in the industry. I still experience discrimination based on, on being a woman, uh, but it was obviously much worse back in the 70s and 80s. Even though Roger Corman was very much for gender equality, that was not the norm in the, in the industry. And one studio executive actually said to me, how can a little girl like you produce a big movie like this? And what I realized was you can't take it personally. Uh, you need to educate people. You need to be a role model for those who are going to follow in your path. Filmmaking is about the team. It's not just about me, it's not just about the actors or the director, it's everyone. So you have to be supportive, you have to be a leader, sometimes you have to be a cheerleader, um, and, and, and sometimes you, you maybe need to scold somebody, um, but you always want to keep the team together. Well, I find it interesting that we're talking about how successful women are in the United States when a woman can't get elected president and you have a woman president. Uh, and I actually met with her four years ago when I was here uh, because I was here talking about women's entrepreneurship and women's empowerment. So I, I, I think that, that cultural values change very slowly, but it is also important to have women support each other. So first, I think women need to work together and support each other. And secondly, it's really important to find men who can be mentors and supporters and realize that everyone needs to work together to change everything. I think that war and conflict changes everything. It changes not only the film industry, but, but how society works and it creates divisions. What I'd like to see is for people to start working together to find things. There's always something that we can start with that we agree upon. It's really important for, for all of us to find common ground um, that we can work toward a better solution. I first read The Walking Dead as a comic book. It came out, I believe, in 2003. And at the time, I was primarily doing features. And I realized that it really didn't make a good feature film because it was a continuing story about characters. And, and people say, oh, well, it's a show about the zombies. Well, no, it's a show about people. And it's a show about who would you be if this were to happen in your life? Um, and, and it could be any kind of, it could be a conflict, it could be, it could be a natural disaster. There, there are many things that, that cause people to, to either work together or work at cross purposes. And, and um, so I decided back in, uh, in about uh, 2009 that it would be a great TV series. And at that point, I was able to get the financing together and put the team together uh, to create the series. I find that through the course of my career, I tend to respond to stories about characters. 
And in many cases, they are ordinary people. They don't believe they have any special skills. They don't believe that um, they will survive when something terrible happens. Um, who find the, the courage within themselves, not only to survive, protagonists are women. I like to empower women through the characters that I have in my projects to believe in themselves and to, to realize that, that maybe if they were in that same situation, they could be Sarah Connor in Terminator or Ellen Ripley in Aliens or the documentary that I made about Wilma Mankiller, who was the first woman elected principal chief of the Cherokee Nation. Ladies and gentlemen, the Cherokee Nation chief of chiefs, Wilma Mankiller. Chief Wilma Mankiller in the Cherokee Nation of Oklahoma, hello! And eight years before, she was homeless, living in her car with her two children on tribal Cherokee lands, and eight years later, her people elected her principal chief. I've always found social media to be incredibly important because more and more, that's where people get their news, that's where they get their information, that's where they connect with their friends and family and also meet people that they don't know. And they can become fans and follow people that uh, you know, whether they're actors or politicians or musicians. And the phenomenon that I found very interesting was that very often people are aware of misinformation and disinformation on Facebook, on Twitter, maybe on TikTok, and very few people talk about YouTube. And the truth is that the number of people who daily sign on to YouTube dwarfs all the other social media platforms put together. And I think it's, it's important to look at YouTube not only as a public marketplace, but to, to realize that there are wonderful people that you can follow. It does a great deal of good, but it also is one of the primary sources of disinformation and misinformation in the world. Now, the difference between them is disinformation is essentially propaganda. It's people who know that what they are pushing out into the world is false, it's not true. And the people who then believe it and share it with other people are sharing misinformation. Well, I'm a big fan of Georgia. I was here four or five years ago and I not only fell in love with the country when I was here then, I saw not only Tbilisi, but Kakheti and Svaneti and Batumi, um, but the Georgian people. I attended a Georgian wedding. Uh, I attended a Supra, uh, where um, I was able to listen to amazing polyphonic singing and uh, mini toasts. I realized it's not a skill set that I have, either singing or toasts. Um, and that hopefully one day in the, in the future, not only will I come back every four or five years, but hopefully every year. I hope to, uh, I hope to be back in Georgia again and uh, to be able to spend more time here and to see more of the country and meet many more Georgians.